Austin here at Jazz Piano College, going to cover the song Nightingale Sang in Barclay Square, a beautiful song. And what I'm going to try to cover in this song is uh, open voicings and a little bit of reharm. So uh, the open voicings I've been talking about recently are the four formulas from the Berklee College of Music up there in Boston. And uh, I don't know why I tried to say that with an English accent, but anyway, uh, we've got uh, E flat major seventh here. And most of the chords here in the A section will have the third on top. So I'll be using this formula. One, five, three, seven, three. Okay? And of course, if it's a minor chord, that's one, five, flat three, flat seven. But here it's a major. So here we go. Okay, tried to use most of the formulas there to the best of my ability. Let's talk about it real quickly. We got the third on top. This chord was a little bit low. I could have taken my thumb away from there and moved this up. And we've got G minor, same formula. I left out the B flat minor seventh, but if I had played it, I would have done it like this. This is a one, five, seven, three, seven that's been altered to get the melody note in there. And it actually is a beautiful voicing for a minor 13th chord. And here we've got one, seven, three, five, one. And one thing about these voicings is there are great starting points for building more complex chords, like take this E flat seventh. I could change this fifth, and most of the time in dominant chords. In jazz, you want to try to change the fifth and use something else, put a, like a sixth in there. And I would be more correct to call that a 13, because once you have the uh, seven in there, this should be thought of as the 13. But, you know, it's easier to think of what note you should play by thinking of it as a sixth. Okay, now we've got the third on top again. Once again, I did skip this D minor chord because it's, it's kind of a reharmonization chord. You could just go right to the G7, but root on top, so it's the one seven formula, and then G7. That's an easy formula because you know, you're like playing a G triad with the shell and then you just move that down. C minor, make it a C minor seventh, and then this beautiful chord. A flat minor six comes on the third beat of the song of the measure here, so there's no melody note there, so I can pick whatever voicing I want. And the reason I picked this one was because two nights ago I was listening to Romeo and Juliet by uh, Tchaikovsky, a beautiful orchestral suite, and you know I kept hearing this. And, you know, it's such a beautiful piece of music, too. Let me just talk about it for a second. You can hear Rachmaninoff in this. You can... you can hear Stravinsky in this. And of course, Tchaikovsky was before those two, so, I mean... Those two composers had to have been influenced by this piece of music. Anyway, that's why I love this chord. And when I first played it, I went, oh my gosh, that's it, you know. <laughs> it was still so fresh in my mind. And then, you know, we could ignore all these bass notes, so. But if you want to stick it in there, it kind of works. Um, but if I was going to play it the way it says here, I would probably just make up my own voicing here. 
use a pedal tone or something, or maybe something like. To me, that doesn't really flow very well. I just do E flat major seventh, right up to F minor. Made up voicing there, you know, it's E flat major seventh. And then A flat minor ninth because of the melody. So we could take a, a standard formula, like one, five, three, seven, three, put the ninth on top. I like to just change the fifth to the seventh. So this is, you know, you know a made up voicing. And then D flat nine. The great thing about these voicings is that you can easily add other notes, like put the nine in. You've got space. That's why we use open voicings, because they sound smooth, they sound professional, and you can use them as starting points to add other junk to them. Small version of the same chord. E flat major seventh, move this up here and, and get rid of the doubled note. You could do it right here. Add a nice tension real close to the melody there. F minor. Easy to add the 11th, B flat with the five on top, could add the flat nine easily, and E flat major sixth. A lot of times when you have the root on top here on a major seventh chord, you just change it to a sixth. It makes it a little bit more palatable to the listener, though this is a very beautiful chord. Even with that interval there, um, you know, you just have to be very, very sensitive. You know, if you went like, you know, then it sounds crappy. But if you are very careful, play it very nicely. See, it's very beautiful, right? You can hear that. And that might be an idea for some reharm there. Some interesting reharm there. A flat minor, but I went ahead and played the D flat bass because I knew it would create this nice suspended chord. And then I did constant structure, took the exact same chord and just followed the melody. And it seems to lead nicely to the next chord, especially if you put that B flat down there. here, A minor 7, you know, I could use formulas like this, or I could make them a little richer. And then G major 7th, I might just play a smaller one there so I could start the melody here. And a nice kind of technique to use here might be block chords. Too rich. I don't even, I, I mean, I like the chord, but I just don't like it right here. Let me try this again. Oh, that's nice. Good place for a reharm because listen, A minor to. D. I don't know, it's okay. Check this out. So, why is that reharm? Because I thought of A seventh, I changed it to a dominant chord, and then instead of playing it that way, I did the tritone substitution. All right, now this is a typical thing doing that. And I suspended the D too.
Now, E7 before A minor. And now I think I'll use something richer. <laughs> you didn't like it, did you? Now what could we do there? Uh, maybe some dominant sevenths. Before I run off and do my thing on Cordy, I'd like to thank Hugh, also Navarra, George, and Thomas for a recent contribution to my channel. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And also Ivan, Emmanuel, and Smooth Jazz Johnny have signed up over on Patreon, and I really appreciate your support over there as well. Okay, Cordy coming up. Thank you all very much. <laughs>